And let's give Jesus a wonderful round of applause. My dear friends, lately we have been under the beautiful influence of the entire Holy Spirit, of many revelations of God's Word that bring joy to our heart, that give us strength, and I hope that this service is the service of your life. We've been studying Jeremiah 31, starting with verse number 11. I'll go over the first verse very briefly. 11. And later, we'll study something different in a very short while. The Lord God says, For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of one stronger than he. We are the Jacob of God, the chosen the one the Lord God picked, whom he blessed, and we've been redeemed. We have nothing to do at all with the enemy. The enemy has lost his grip on us. Those who have been redeemed by the Lord bear no trace at all of wickedness, unless they want it. That may connect them to the enemy or through which he'll get in and contaminate their life. If you have a trace, you must get rid of it because he gets in there. Dr. Suarez, when I was redeemed, I was really redeemed, completely delivered. But then I stumbled and fell and I sinned, I transgressed. That's where the problem is. Is there a way out? Yes. The Bible says that if we confess our transgressions, confess them to God and to those who we have wronged, obviously, who we've defrauded, we have caused harm, he is two things, faithful and just, to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then we continue as written in Romans 8.1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. There's actually more to it. I preached it before. It's to cheer your heart. Let's see someone who was blessed in the name of Jesus. Why are you carrying an umbrella? Because I uh, I was using it as a cane. Oh, you used it as a cane. There are two pins in my knees because I broke it and I have a... Uh... So you broke your knee and there are two pins in it. Yes. When were they inserted? In 2009. So so for six years you've walked uh, yeah, using the umbrella. I couldn't walk normally. How were you walking? Show it to us. Like this? Yes, like this. And now? Now, thank God, I can walk. So, so put it over your shoulder. I had a lot of pain, but from now on, I won't take medication. Is it gone now? In the name put it, of put Jesus. it over your shoulder and, and walk normally now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, you're so awesome. Let's clap for Jesus, brethren. Oh, my friends, that's what God wants to do. The more we surrender to the Lord, and we must surrender, we must be stripped of what is not good, the more we will have from God. What if we do not surrender to God? We won't have anything. We have to seek the Lord. Today is the day to seek him out because Jacob, hey, dear Jacob, redemption has been complete. There's nothing missing at all. You must believe in it. If you've sinned, cleanse yourself in the name of Christ. Let's see another blessed person now, shall we? A lot of pain in my back ever since I had a baby because of the anesthesia. For more than five years, I've had this pain in my back. When I was sitting there, I started to pray to God. Now it's gone in the name of Jesus. Are you free now? I'm free in the name what of Jesus. What couldn't you do before? Squat. So bend over now. Oh, glory to God. Let's applaud Jesus. Blessed be the Lord. Let's go back to Jeremiah. So we have seen here that the Lord redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of the stronger one than he. In the previous service, we read verse 12. They shall come. Brethren, those who are redeemed shall come, unless they don't want to. People, they have the right to say, I want to go to hell to live with Satan throughout eternity. Good gracious God. There are crazy people like this. We can intercede for, for, for some of them, for some of those who are willing will not be stopped by anyone. Those people shall come, shall come. It's the word of God. So if you bump into an obstacle and think you will not, it's the devil deceiving you. You have overcome because God, the Lord Almighty said, they shall come. What else does the Lord God say here? 
and sing in the height of Zion. Zion is the church. The church was formed. The church was, it was sanctified by Jesus, created by him. And this is in such a great height that the devil cannot reach it. We shall sing today, right now here, every day in the height of the church. Christians cannot be carried away by the forces of hell. If you did that before, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Do you know that? Simple as that. The first day of the rest of your life. So from now on, don't do that. Do seek this exaltation, which is in the height of the church sanctified by Jesus. The church that never, this glory that will never ever fade away. It's what God wants you to live. What else does God want? Pay attention to this. Three important things. Streaming to the goodness of the Lord. What goodness is this I have to stream to? Three things. Wheat and new wine and oil. If you don't know what it means, I'll explain it to you. Wheat is food for the body. New wine is for the soul to give joy. Oil is for the spirit, for anointing. You and me, we have to, we have to stream to that goodness. We stream to the goodness of the world. We want a big pile of money now. You may have a huge safe box, but if you are not seeking God, sometimes we'd better feel a little hungry in order to seek for food. So we must have the bread, the wheat. We actually must seek out the new wine and the oil. God, my body has to be sound. I need to be well fed. Dr. Swadis, the problem is that we get old. Yes, but the Bible says that the Lord renews all of our strength. He renews our youth. Take possession of this. Jacob, Jacob's of God. It's, it's true. Our joy must cause to sing to the height of Zion. We have to hurry to get the wheat and the new wine, joy instead of sadness, 24 hours a day, even in the wee hours. We have a great problem. We pray God gives us joy and we thank him whenever we get the answer. And oil, anointing, without it we are nothing. Let's keep reading this verse. For the young of the flock and the herd. This, this is a reference to the sacrifice that was made in the past. Spiritually speaking, today we need to have sheep and calves to offer in sweet-smelling sacrifice, which is the fruit of our lips. There are people who can't offer, uh, offer sacrifices to God, a perfect adoration. It's not just saying He is everything. No, you, you, you must understand how to worship so that God may enter your life. David, he was king. David was a warrior. David composed many psalms. God said, a man after my own heart. At that time, he had to be a warrior. Otherwise, his nation would be destroyed. But at the same time, he was a worshiper of God. We must get the young flock and the herd. And what else? Their souls shall be like a well-watered garden. A watered garden never has a, a dry or, or burn or lifeless vegetation. It's properly watered. It's very beautiful. It's so nice to see a well-watered garden. It's so pleasant to admire. It is the soul that the Lord God wants to see in you. And they shall sorrow. What's written here, brethren? No more at all. Sadness is over. Every day a smile, a contentment. Then you start to bloom. Dr. Suarez, I can't. No, you have a demon that is binding you. Rest assured, it's a demon that's causing you to miss out the great blessing of the gospel. Instead of being happy for having lots of money or for having nothing, it doesn't matter to you. You are always in the presence of God enjoying such such great bliss the joy that comes from god the bible said it is our strength as we have seen let's move on to the next verse then and only then right let's see what happens shall the virgin rejoice in the dance and what else and the young men and the old together everybody will rejoice not only will the pretty young lady rejoice or young handsome men everybody will rejoice in the dance in the dance God sends us here and we dance. He sends us there and we dance again. And we dance with joy. No matter what comes our way, we have a solution for everything that might come up. What else is written here? For I will turn their mourning to joy. Oh, 
Oh, Jesus, thank you. Oh, Lord, I don't know what to do. No, Lord, thank you. If I didn't know better, now I know and I will pray for you. You will reveal your word. It's like when we happen to lose something. We can't find it. We search high and low, but we can't find it. Yesterday, I knelt down and asked the Lord for a blessing. After I returned from a trip, I didn't remember where I had put the money I had. I said, God, what do I do? I, I saved that money. How can I lose it? It's in, my, it's in my bedroom. I've searched for it. But God, you know where it is. It was so fast and I found it. I even spoke in tongues. Lord, you are awesome. <laughs> God, God doesn't want us to cry. For I will turn their mourning to joy. Will comfort them. Oh, what an awesome God. We are comforted by God. And with the same comfort with which we are comforted, we can comfort other people. Because what God does for us is a gift that never abandons us. When you are healed of any kind of evil, you have actually mastered that kind of evil. You pray and God will heal. He heals everyone. One day you, f you, you find someone who has the same problem you had and tell them and they marvel at it. And you explain that, that you master that kind of a problem as a matter of fact. Yes, if you hear the word of God and believe, I pray and God does his work in you. Oh, Dr. Suarez, there's no such thing. Hey, what do you mean? I'll read another verse and I'll be right back to the one we are reading. Let's open to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, all of them, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort that with which we ourselves are comforted by God. That's it. God comforts us, friends, not for us to be an island of happiness. Hey, John, look, look at John and how he is prospering, he's happy, his family is doing well. No, John must also comfort the family of Peter, of Anthony, or any other person. He comforts, uh, uh, I shall comfort them, God is speaking here, and make them rejoice rather than sorrow. Oh, I shall turn your frustration into success. I shall turn your illness into health. Friends, by analogy, that, that we must understand it, we must interpret it this way. I shall turn your poverty into wealth, your want into prosperity. Everything can be included here, brethren, and make them rejoice rather than sorrow. How do you feel today? You're about to begin a new year, so hold your head up high. It's the best way to say goodbye to the old year and embrace the new one. Oh my God, I will never forget about Jeremiah 31, 11. And from this verse on, and there's another verse, and the next one is about a new subject. I will satiate the soul of the priests with abundance. Their souls will have anointing. Abundance means anointing, it's oil. He will satiate them. And who are the priests? I am one. You are a priest as well. Yes, you are one. Revelation 5.10 To our God, the Lord Jesus has made us and have made us kings and priests. So there's no difference. I'm a minister to minister this information to you. And all of us, and I am included, we are kings sovereign over our life and priests. And my soul, he says it here, I will satiate the soul of the priests with abundance, with oil, with anointing. And my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Oh, glory to God. What are the goodness we should hurry to obtain the wheat, the new wine, and the oil? It means that, in summary, food for the entire body. Wine is drink for the soul. And the oil, anointing for the spirit. The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. We must abound in those gifts, friends. What is he saying here? My people shall be satisfied. They will not hunger or thirst, shall be satisfied with my goodness. He gives them abundantly. But we have to seek and to sanctify ourselves. We must be godly people 
who will receive the blessings of the Lord? Let's read Psalm 24 again, which we have already read. Verse number five. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Who? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. God has spoken to you today. He's spoken to me. Bow your head and close your eyes. God, thank you. In the name of Jesus, now I enter a new phase, God. And all these people here will too. We enter the phase of appropriation of what you have told us today. We want, O oh Lord, to sing in the height of Zion, and we shall achieve that stage because you created salvation. You redeemed us from the hand of one stronger than us. There's nothing in us that's in the hand of the enemy. There's not even a spot of the enemy to taint us. Oh God, no matter what wrong things we have done after our salvation, we seek your forgiveness now. God, we're not interested in religious philosophy of religious shows. We are seeking the word of the Lord, the living word, the real power and we worship you now. Dear God, I bless your people. Now I bless your sons and your daughters. I bless all those who are praying. God, please put your angel beside those people for them not to give up, for them to succeed. Oh my God. Today is the first day of the rest of our lives. Now we enter into a covenant with you, an eternal covenant, a true covenant, a covenant, Lord, we won't ever give up because you called us and you prepared us for this moment. You knew what we were, but it pleased you to give us this blessing. Now we can walk in the rain or under the sun, because the sun shall not strike us by day nor the moon by night. And Lord, the rain shall be a blessing. Even if a thousand fall at our side and 10,000 at our right, it shall not come near us. God, your blessing is upon these people now. I undo all the power of the devil and I say, leave, go away, demon of deceit, of lies, of seduction, wither away in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your glory. And amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's applaud Jesus because he is worthy. Let's now watch the real life drama, shall we? Amen. Actually, I was very little. I was about 10 or 11 and I saw my mother watching Dr. Suarez. She was a person who, well, she was unruly, a party animal. When I spoke of Jesus to her, she would take it as a joke. When I needed something, I'd go to church. When I was sick and something happened, then I'd go to church. And in the meantime, I met my husband and I found out he was depressive he had bipolar disorder back in those days they used to use cigarette as an outlet you know and that's why we used to fight all the time you know we didn't argue when we went out to parties there was no fight then but when we were at home we would bicker in addition to that the death of one of her sisters-in-law affected her health and she became depressive too they were very good friends actually they had grown up together. They were best friends. But when her friend died, Sweeney wanted to die too. She said she wanted to go to the cemetery and take her out of the grave. The devil was instigating her to commit suicide. He said to me, grab a rope, tie it in the bathroom window and die. 
You'll see your friend. But there's always a way out. Sueli found out about it through TV on a Sunday. Pastor Jaime was saying, you who have just lost a loved one, you're taking medications. I sat and said, whoa, he's speaking to me. You who are about to commit suicide, don't do that, my sister. If you want to accept Jesus now, I'll make an appeal. Stand up, then I stood up. Right? I said, I want it. I want this God everyone says is good. A God that heals and delivers. I want Him. She did change overnight, you know. It was on a Sunday. I was watching the service. I accepted Jesus and I quit old habits. I changed it. My husband started to notice it and said, Whoa, she doesn't argue with me anymore. He also said, Well, if she changed, I want it too. When he came here, he told me the situation that he was going through and he also told me about his addiction. So I asked him, are you, are you really interested in changing? He said, Pastor, I'm willing, but I have no strength. So from now on, you will no longer smoke those, those cigarettes. And why? Because I will fast with you. I'm going to fast with you, but you must be willing to do it. I never thought I would go to a church and become the person that I am today, changed, transformed. He smiles, his eyes shine. He kept on saying, My God, my God, I want to stay at the church the whole day. There's no point in trying to walk without Jesus. There's no point in trying to do it because you won't be successful. Once they were free from addictions and depression, Sueli and her husband started doing God's work and they received a beautiful calling. It's so good to know that through, right, your sponsorship, you are helping to save other lives, you know. Just as I was healed by Jesus, so I have felt the need to become a sponsor and help other, other people, right? If no one sponsored, how could they ever air a service at 6 p.m. on TV, right? If it wasn't on TV, I wouldn't have heard the word and I wouldn't have converted and today I would be dead. And I quote, the word of God, me and my household will serve the Lord, right? He's simply the best. Only Jesus can do that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me say something here God inspired me to say. A saved person is doing well. Then something happens. And they start to have strange, unusual reactions. And think they have bipolar disorder. And it may even be confirmed by a medical test. Because the devil can produce such feelings. Oh, they start to believe that it was good then. No, they don't know. When you were saved, you were delivered from the kingdom of darkness by him who is perfect. You don't have to be adulterous men or women, a thief, a criminal, or having a bipolar disorder or something. Just hold fast to what Jesus did. They shall come. Stick to this scripture. Do it. I will be what God wants. Your redemption was complete. It wasn't just partial, no. It wasn't done hastily by an imperfect person. It was, it was done by someone who knows how to do it, who created all things out of nothing, all in amazing perfection. You have this blessing. Confess your sin now, and your exams will show that you have a hormonal imbalance, that you have a disorder, you have this and this and that, because the devil does these things in you. Don't confess them. Stay firm. They shall come. You were born to be a blessing in the name of Jesus. Don't forget it. It's actually an ordeal, but you will be blessed always. Let's go to the question segment. Dr. Suarez, how can I take the word of God to a homosexual without sounding offensive? Oh, it is done with wisdom to a homosexual, to a person who is sick, to those who are unemployed. People might feel offended. No matter who they are, it is with wisdom that God's work is done. So ask the Lord for wisdom. It's a good question. Second question now. Dr. Suarez, why are there so many people in church, but they don't know the purpose of God for their life? I don't know either. <laughs> we preach and, and urge, but some people seem to have a block. Oh, Jesus, please teach us how we must overcome this problem so that everybody can understand it. Let's go to the Open Your Heart segment, please. Dr. Suarez, I need your guidance. My husband's cousin was diagnosed with cancer. 
I have prayed a lot in my church, and I have asked many people to pray for him. But the disease just keeps getting worse. My husband started to blaspheme against God by saying that Jesus doesn't care about our problems or our pain. What should I say to my husband? Why do some people get healed but others do not? His cousin is not an evangelical, but I think he believes in God. Please, Dr. Suarez, help me. There's a lot of confusion, right? It's really very sad to know someone has cancer, but cancer is nothing compared to the other cancer or transgression. He who dies without salvation will not suffer only one day with that pain that is one million times worse than the pain of cancer. He'll go to eternity in perdition and we'll never leave it, but we don't mind. Even ourselves are, are leading an immoral life, but the Bible says that fornicators, the sodomites, the idolaters, and this and that, and they won't inherit the kingdom of God, but we don't do anything. Then God heals because God wants to heal, but you say, it's nonsense. God didn't. Me, I happened, I happened to be healed because I took medications and I was free. I was free from this cancer. He doesn't even give glory to God. I can assure you that if you seek out the Lord God, He will say, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Then you are healed. As to your husband, tell him to be sensible so as not to let the devil destroy him completely because his destruction may lead to his cousin's destruction. But if he seeks out God, God will hear him. His cousin might accept Jesus, understand, and convert. Of course, everybody believes in God. Even the devil believes in God, and he trembles when God's name's mentioned. God's name makes Satan tremble, but he won't be saved. You know what I mean? You should seek God's word, hear God's word, and be blessed. Let's stand up to pray now. I'm going to pray for those who are at home. God, I reach out to those people with my prayer. I want to bless their life. I determine that they are blessed now. I rebuke all evil now, and I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. And you say, Amen. Thank you, Lord.